Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about something that I think is really, really important. If you're thinking about doing a facelift, this is something you need to do first, and this is something everybody can do. What is the very first and most important step in facial rejuvenation? Your skin. And this is gonna be the topic that we discuss, what is happening to skin as it ages, and what you're gonna be able to do with this knowledge to actually start being proactive and actually start preventing and managing your skin aging. All right, so let's break it down. There are two major factors that make us look young. Number one is youthful facial shape. Just think of any 20, 30 year old you can think of. They have this very firm jawline, very firm neck, full upper face, smooth contour in their temples, no hollows under their eyes, etc., etc. So those are the facial shape configurations of a young person. Now with aging, that changes, right? Everything starts to sag, the shape of the face goes from being heart shaped to becoming more of a rectangle, etc. But there's also another very, very important component of a young looking face, and that is young skin. You can't really think of a 20, 30 year old without thinking of skin that is bright, translucent, that reflects light beautifully, has small pores, is free of discoloration, and overall is supple and thick, right? You think of young faces, you think of somebody with young, beautiful skin, and youthful facial shape as I just described it. Facial shape stuff, there's nothing you can do about it. That's just gonna happen. That's hormonal, that's genetic, that's just normal sort of run-of-the-mill aging that typically starts affecting us somewhere in our mid 40s and beyond and everything starts to change very rapidly. But also simultaneously at that point, you're starting to see real changes in the skin as well. However, with the skin, unlike facial shape, you actually can control it. As we age, there is a change in the production of collagen in the skin. This is happening at the cellular level. There's cells in the skin called fibroblasts. They're making collagen. Collagen creates the, the scaffolding and thickness of the skin. And as time goes on, the production of collagen begins to diminish. And as a result of that diminishing collagen production, what we end up seeing is skin starting to thin. That's one of the most important telltale signs of skin aging. So how can we stimulate Stimulate collagen. The other things that are happening are all of that sun that we've accumulated throughout our lives. And for those you know, who live in the coastal communities and are in sun-drenched um, areas, you're gonna see a lot more sun and your skin is gonna remember that you've seen all that sun. And as a result of that memory, what's gonna start to happen as you get a little bit older, that skin starts to show the consequences of the sun. What are the consequences? Well, number one, it's the production of pigment. Number two, Two, it's just the breakdown of the overall collagen and elastin of the skin, so further weakening the support of the skin and making the skin even thinner. And all around, drying the skin and making the skin look dehydrated, etc., which also happens just naturally as part of aging. So sun all of a sudden becomes a major, major part of that. So you've got pigment changes, loss of collagen production, all of which is starting to make the skin look more thin, more wrinkled, more dehydrated, more discolored, etc. And that is aging skin, right? So now you say, all right, well, great. You told me what's, what aging skin is all about. Now, what can I do about it? This is the cool part. Aging skin can be completely prevented. I've been practicing for nearly 20 years and my entire career I've seen two different types of patients. You've got the type of patient who's lived somewhere in Canada, rarely got out in the sun. And then you've got the patient who has lived in Southern California and has been you know, tanning her whole life. You look at these two people and they look very different. The skin of that patient, no matter what age they are, the one from the Northern's got this incredibly supple, beautiful, youthful looking skin. Why? Because they haven't seen a lot of sun. As a result of that lack of sun exposure, that entire cycle has been paused or slowed down. So I'm gonna say this, the patient from Southern California is significantly more 
aged in the skin because sun is the greatest accelerator of skin aging. Guys, there's no way around this. The exposure to sun during, during our lifetime will have a, a consequence as we get older. So the first and very most important thing you can do starting today is be really good with sun protection. What does sun protection mean? Well, it means using a broad spectrum sunscreen usually one that is, is uh, sweat proof and waterproof a little bit, but likely we want something that has a little bit of a tint to it too, so you know you can use it as a foundation. So I personally like Elta MD, there's a lot of really good ones out there, but my characteristics are that they're non-greasy, non-comeogenic, they are um, zinc and titanium based. Those are the kind of basic criteria for sunscreen. Let's talk the next most important thing you can possibly do. If you happen to be watching this video in your 30s and 20s, and you're kind of like, okay, what can I actually start doing now? The daily skincare routine that you do is the very thing that's gonna prevent your skin from aging. So what are the right individual products that you need to use? Foremost, I would say retinol is probably the, the must have in a skincare routine. Retinol has been around forever, 50 plus years, it's shown to stimulate collagen, it's shown to increase cell turnover, it's shown to do a little bit of micro peeling, it decreases pigmentation. It's like all the things that we want in an anti-aging, retinol has, right? So retinol or retin-A, those are categories that you wanna include in your skincare regimen. The next component I would say is vitamin C. Vitamin C also has been tried and true. It's a very, very fundamental um, component of a good skincare routine for the same reasons. It stimulates collagen, decreases pigmentation, increases glow, it's an antioxidant, so it kind of counters some of the stuff that's happening with the sun, but that's not all that you need because your skin also needs to be hydrated. So what are things that can hydrate the skin? Well, number one, you wanna have something like a hyaluronic acid serum um, included in there. Hyaluronic acid is, is like a super sponge. It brings a lot of moisture and water. Lipids are really important because it, it manages the oil texture of the skin. So uh, people with dry skin will become less dry. People with uh, oily skin will become less oil because of these extrinsic uses of lipids and, and uh, different types of oils. But in addition to that, there's a lot of other important things. Niacinamide is really, really important because it gives good surface immunity. It's a very, very important component of our skin health and structure all around. Then you've got categories of things like peptides. Peptides are specialized molecules that actually make an impact on the skin. So molecules um, like peptides can have collagen stimulating effects, decreasing the negative effects of, of aging directly by um, decreasing the, the loss of elastin and collagen and all those type of things that can happen in the skin. You got growth factors that are really, really important because they're further gonna stimulate collagen and build the skin matrix up. Then another really important category is the pigment, right? We talked about the effects of sun damage on the skin. You wanna use things that are going to um, decrease the production of pigment. So non-hydroquinone lighteners are really, really important because hydroquinone is, is, although great, you can't use it every day for the rest of your life. It's not good for your skin. So non-hydroquinone lighteners are really, really important components, but also vitamin C and retinol can also decrease pigment. So you see there's a synergy between these active ingredients that we're talking about. So. Those are just a nice range of things that will address fundamentally all the different changes that are happening with this skin, right? We said you're gonna have decrease in collagen production, we said you're gonna have increased pigment, you're gonna have dehydration, loss of moisture, you're gonna have fine lines and wrinkles, loss of firmness. Every one of those things that I just mentioned um, will address a specific part of the aging skin. So that is what you need in your daily routine, your skincare basket. But here's the challenge, for a lot of people, that ends up being like six or eight, maybe even 10 individual products to cover the gamut. So one of the things that I personally have gotten very invested in because I saw the challenges that my patients were having um, trying to organize themselves in this kind of way, I took five years and I developed a combination approach, what we call the trifecta, which basically takes all those important ingredients and puts them into a three-step process. So you've got cleansing, which I didn't even mention is such an important first step towards uh, good skincare routine because if you have grit and grime and dirt on your skin, how can you possibly have anything absorb onto your skin? So cleansing Cleansing is the first step. We have a vitamin C called Quench, and then the all-in-one where it takes all of the things that I just mentioned and puts them into a single bottle is called Illuminate. And that is my solution for the daily skincare routine. Every single ingredient that I mentioned, 
You can buy them individually or you can get them as part of the trifecta and just make it really simple. That was my goal with it. That's the only reason I, I mentioned this is because I recognize that it's hard to do something consistently unless it's really simple because the most important thing everyone needs to do is consistency. Consistency in, in protecting your skin against the sun, consistency in terms of putting these important active ingredients on your skin. If you do these things that we just mentioned and you do them continuously, consistently, over time, your skin will no doubt just get better and better and better. That's a fact, there's no, there's no way around it. Even in a, in a matter of three to four months, you'll start to see the changes happening with your skin. That is the most important thing you can do as a prospective facial rejuvenation patient if you're thinking about surgery, etc. Surgery is fantastic, I do it every single day. We do these beautiful, beautiful facial rejuvenation results, but if the skin is not up to that youthful look, you only get so far. So take care of your skin, make that a commitment that you have to yourself, and don't look for short shortcuts and don't get confused by all the, the marketing misdirection and all this other stuff. Everything I just told you right now is all you need to know to be able to do it the right way. All right, guys, I hope that really helped uh, give you some perspective on a very, very important topic. Make sure you share this along with some friends and family because I think the more of us who really get a, a good understanding about this, the more empowered we're gonna be to be able to do the right things for ourselves. Like it if you enjoyed this content. Um, any questions you have, drop them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer as many of them as possible. And ultimately, if you like this type of content and you wanna see it on a continual basis, subscribe to the channel. We make about two videos a week. So that'll give you an opportunity to help you make the best decision for your own facial rejuvenation needs type stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much. It was my pleasure talking about a subject that I'm extremely, extremely passionate about. And until next time, Dr. Amir Karam.